To get started editing a route description, I'm going to go ahead and paste in one that I already have ready, but it doesn't have any formatting. As you can see, it's just plain text, and on the right side here, there's nothing formatted. So let's start by making this a heading. That'll give it a bigger font size, and it'll look good. And then we'll come down here, and we have this note. Now to make it stand out, I'm going to go ahead and italicize it. And notice on the right side that it got italicized. And then let's come to the bottom here and take these points of interest section and caution section and use a secondary heading, this H2 button. It won't be as big as the primary heading. As you can see, here's a primary heading, but it still looks good and it separates off our other sections. So if we wanted to do more formatting, we could. We could go through and carefully bold or italicize important things. We could create additional sections with uh, this H1 or H2 button. We could have a bullet list, um, or we could even link to an external web page with this link button. But the most important thing to creating a great route description is that you need to have route references. Now, any description that talks about a route is going to be talking about places along that route. It's going to be talking about uh, portions of that route. And when you're displaying an ambassador route on our website, you'll see a map on your right and the description on the left. And as you scroll through the description, that map stays there the whole time. And the reason for this is so that as the person is coming in and looking at this ambassador route, they're going to read something like the Banks Manning Gravel Option Route allows you to use the Banks Vernonia Trailhead. And the first thing you're going to think is, what trailhead? Where is this Banks Vernonia Trailhead? So as the creator of this route description, uh, it's your job to make sure that these portions of the description tie back to the map to make life easier when people are actually browsing these routes. So let's use this example. The Banks Vernonia Trailhead, I'll go ahead and just select that. I'll go ahead and click, it's a POI, because I know I already have a POI on my route for that trailhead. And here's that POI, it's the Banks Vernonia Trailhead. And now you'll see it says POI, it has the ID of that POI, and then here's our label, Banks Vernonia Trailhead. And you'll see over here on the right side in the preview, it's turned it into a link. So let's go ahead and do another one of these. If I pop down here, we'll see grab a dilly bar at the Dairy Queen or carefully cross the highway. So I know we have a POI specifically telling people to be careful when they cross the highway. So let's link this text to that POI. Click POI. You can scroll in on this map and see this is the, this is the POI I'm wanting to link to. I'll click on it. And then there you go, this has turned into a link. And the user will be happy because they'll be able to just mouse over that and see where that is on the map. So let's pop down here and do one of the more interesting types of route references. Uh, let's see. So here we go, the descent on Northwest Everly. So if I'm looking at this route, I'm going to read this and see, okay, the descent's going to be a great reward. I mean, which, which descent are you talking about? Again, it goes back to, you know, unless you go and tell me what mile it starts at and what mile it ends at, then I probably don't know what you're referencing because I'm not familiar with the route. Um, so let's make it easy for him. The descent on Northwest Everly. Now, this is going to be a selection because it's a portion of the route. It's not just a point on the route. So let's click selection. And I happen to know that the descent is this hill right here. So I can go ahead and select it. And you can see I'm not doing a perfect selection right now. That's okay, because it zooms in. And then I can adjust it. I'll fine tune my selection. And there's that descent that I'm referring to. And then I'll click the reference selection button. And now the descent of Northwest Everly is a link and it's gonna show off that section. Now, one more type of route reference that I'll show off is a point reference. It's just a point along the route. It doesn't have to be a POI. And that's perfect for when you want to say something like this. You know, there's two possible spots where dogs might be present. The first is on your right at mile 14.5. Now, I know this specifies exactly along the route where it is. But again, make life easy for the person viewing this route and turn it into a link, a point reference in this case and it's 14.5, well, again, we can zoom in on the elevation profile, so I'll just drag across, I know that includes 14.5,
And then I could even zoom in again here and make sure I get just the exact right spot. Perfect. And then I can go ahead and click. Now I'm not going to click because I want to also show you that you can click on the map as well. So oftentimes you'll come in and say, oh, actually that was right here by where the street is. So you can come and click on the map. Either way, you end up with, again, a link for this mile 14.5. So now that we've created each of the route reference types, a POI reference, a point reference, and a selection reference, let's go ahead and click Save and see what it all looks like. So here we are back on our ambassador profile. Let's scroll down and take a look at our route. Now under detailed description, it says 525 words. And so that we can see what this really looks like, let's click preview. Here's our postcard. This is our overview description that comes from the route planner. And now let's scroll down and see the actual detailed description that we entered. So we see we have this map here on the right that stays with us as we scroll. And then each of the route references, you can see you can mouse over them and it'll highlight, or you can click on them and it'll zoom in. So that's what it looks like for a POI. Here's what it looks like for a section. You can zoom back out. And notice while you're zoomed in, these metrics do update to reflect the selection. And then finally, for a point on the route, it'll identify the point on the map in the elevation profile. And if you click, it'll zoom in.